What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. This video right here serves as a message and piece of advice to anyone who is just starting to learn about personal finances. And honestly, if I could go back and do it all over again, I would follow the exact advice in this video word for word. So I hope you're excited. I'm excited to jump right into it. We're gonna get into it right now. Assuming that you're new to this and assuming that you have a full-time job, the very first thing I would do is figure out exactly what my salary is after taxes, I would wipe out the number that they tell me that I make every year, and I'd be like, no, 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 no. What do I make after taxes? And I would look at it on a month to month basis. I would look at what my after tax pay is for a full month, and then what I would do is I would take that and I would cut it in half because most of us get paid twice a month, so I would make it real life to myself. So I'm not just looking at the whole month, but I'm looking at it in terms of weekly increments because the thing is you definitely get bills in between like it's different times of the month and sometimes of the month you feel like you have more money than you know what to do with and then the other part of the month it may feel like all right i gotta i gotta be careful with this one now i might spend all my money so so if you know exactly what you're making every month after taxes and you divide that by two so you can see what you make every other week that is going to put you light years ahead than if you didn't do that because now you can budget for every other week instead of budgeting for every month. So now that part of the month where you have more than usual left over, you'll be able to think a little further ahead with that money right there. And the same thing goes for that part of the month where you feel like you gotta scramble a little bit, you gotta penny pinch a little bit. You won't have to as much because now you can plan for it way ahead of time. Second thing I would do is I would be hyper intentional about saving. So once I got everything down to the penny as far as my after tax pay, I would go ahead and automate every single thing. I wouldn't do it all at once, but I would make it a point by the end of, let's say a three month period to have everything automated. So all my bills would be automated, any debt that I have would be automated. And then on top of that, my savings and my savings goals for myself would be automated. I'll start off with something like automating my rent because you can't miss out on that. And then go to a few more things. Okay, now I'm gonna automate my rent and my utilities. Now I'm gonna go ahead and automate my cell phone bill. Then my internet bill. I wouldn't do it all at once if I wasn't comfortable yet and I still wasn't sure what the numbers meant or how much I go through in a given month anyway. I would just do it incrementally. And that right there would make my life easier. It would. I would never be part of that conversation of the people who are like, I forgot to pay rent so now I have to pay a late fee. I would never be like, well, I forgot to pay my credit card, so now I gotta pay a late fee. I never have to worry about getting emails or something in the mailbox saying, hey, you're late on your phone bill. And it would kind of save myself from a little bit of embarrassment, but also just knowing that now you owe more money. And sometimes there are workarounds of this. You can actually call up the place and say, hey, I don't know what happened, here's the money. And they're like, okay, cool, I'll waive that fee or whatever. But you wouldn't have to do this if everything was automated in the first place and you got yourself comfortable with automating everything. So I'm, I'm just trying to prevent the problem from happening and you won't have to worry about a workaround. Cause I've definitely been that guy on the phone one time with my apartment complex years ago saying, hey, I'm not sure what happened. My payment didn't go through. Here's the money. I, I've had it this whole time and it must have just slipped my mind. Don't worry about it, we'll work something out. They waived the fee, but then I thought to myself, well, if I had this automated in the first place, I wouldn't have to worry about it. So that's just a piece of advice for you, and that's something that I would definitely prioritize at the very, very beginning is automating everything. There's a, there's a couple things that's gonna happen when you do automate everything. First of all, you're gonna realize there's money coming out of your account without you doing anything, and because of that, you're gonna have to learn how to live on less because your money is automatically going to these other places which are actually your needs but i guarantee you your spending is going to go down because now you're going to see the true number that you have left within the month to spend and that's going to give you more discipline but it's also going to give you a transparent picture of how much freedom you technically have with the money that you have left and it's also going to show you how much money you're going to be able to save from here on out and you can go a little bit more be like okay I, I was able to save 250 this month so I'm gonna try 300 next month and then you'll get a better and better idea until you can basically max yourself out when it comes to saving because that goes along with the next tip is I would prioritize stacking up my savings as quickly as possible when I first graduated college my biggest thing was Dave Ramsey Dave Ramsey Dave Ramsey all he talks about is paying off debt 
That's what I want to do. I done saved my $1,000 that he recommends. Okay, cool. Now I want to pay off debt. And I was ready to pay off my debt before that grace period, you know, that little gracing period before you actually had to pay off any of your college debt. I was like, nah, I want to pay it now. I was ready to throw thousands and thousands at it. But then I really had to think about it. And it's something that I didn't really think about until years later, years and years later. But what would have been smarter for my financial well-being is to actually make sure that I prioritize saving as much as possible. Why stop at a thousand when you can do three? You know what I mean? Like if you were in a position right now where you're getting started, you're just learning about this personal finance thing and you're making decent money to where you can actually put a good chunk of it away, why would you stop at just 1000 there are so many things that could happen to you or your loved ones right now that will greatly exceed $1,000. And as challenging as saving $1,000 can be when you first get started, once you save the first $1,000, that's going to give you confidence to save your next thousand, then your next one. And before you know it, you'll have five figures in the bank account. But I'm all about saving with a goal. And the goal here is to simply have a peace of mind. So I would prioritize saving that first two thousand dollars because i think the rule of doubling is so important like if someone tells you you should save one thousand and you save two thousand you're going to be twice as prepared as the person who just has one thousand dollars saved you get what i mean so that's money that is not to be touched and then i'll create a completely separate account that is an emergency fund and i would choose a high yield savings account like say marcus by goldman sachs and i actually have an account with them and i use them i add money to that emergency fund every single month no matter how big it gets i just add little by little every single month right now because of some referrals that i've been having it's gone above the four percent threshold it's at like 4.75 percent so it's cool to know that you have your money in a place that is growing and it's a long term like emergency fund that you don't plan on touching anyways but again i don't really condone saving just to save so the first couple thousand dollars is going to give you that confidence and then the emergency fund is going to give you that peace of mind the amount of money that you should have in your emergency fund everyone says three to six months worth of expenses but realistically most of us actually out earn our expenses so what would be better is if you could have three to six months worth of paychecks in your emergency fund and you'll notice that this is going to take quite some time, especially as you go throughout the years and you earn more at your job or you have more streams of income or whatever the case may be, it's gonna get harder and harder. And that's by design. Let's say you're making $60,000 a year right now and you have three to six months worth of paychecks in your emergency fund and it took you a few years to get there, cool. But what if you make $75,000 next year? So now your paychecks have increased. So now it's time to keep putting money into that, right? And it's going to keep growing. And that's the beauty behind it is that's going to give you almost a bulletproof mindset. Like there's not a whole lot of things that can go wrong. That's going to freak you out. Once you have that kind of financial backing, a lot of people think I'm tripping when I say that, but I'm telling you that it's not tripping. It's not. I remember when I first achieved having four months worth of paychecks just sitting there in my emergency fund. It was an amazing feeling. And at that point, like, a lot of people really couldn't tell me anything. There was no amount of threats in the world that my job at the time could give me that would make me fearful. Because I started out, when I had my first ever full-time job, I was pretty fearful because it was a cutthroat industry. People got fired and sent home all the time, and I was new, and I just wanted to... I was really just out here young, just trying to make it, you know, and I felt like nothing I did was good enough. And so the threats came and, hey, don't be, end up like this person. You'll get walked out just like them and stuff like that kind of got to me, kind of got into my head. But once I built my finances up, once I've got my money up, so to speak, and once I started building my savings account and my emergency fund, I was like, wait a minute, do they, do they know who I am, you know, like you're gonna start thinking like, hold on a minute, they can't be talking to me. Do they know who I am? Don't they know that I have four months worth of paychecks in my savings account? Don't they know that if they fired me, I would get another job and I would have money and I wouldn't have to worry about nothing and still have more in my savings account than most people? Stuff like that, so I'm just saying. That's what I would heavily prioritize. This is gonna help you avoid a bunch of issues in the future it's going to help you get rid of a bunch of things that go on in your head in the future like 
man, I don't, I don't have the money for that. You ain't going to find yourself saying you don't have the money for certain things because your emergency fund is going to be on point. And then once those two things are on point, if you wanted to take a break from saving, you could stop saving in those two specific accounts and you could actually put the extra money that you have toward something else like investing or extra money towards your 401k at work, which is also investing, but it's a little more secure than probably if you did it by yourself because professionals are controlling your uh, 401k at work. You could have more play money or if you want to start funding like your kid's college fund or your own education and you have your own aspirations and dreams that you want to build on the side, you can then put money that you have extra toward that stuff. Do you understand like how this is just building up? It's, it becomes a very beautiful picture when you really think about it because it starts off very slow and very boring and like, yeah, I'm getting my finances together. I'm making sure I'm getting my savings right. But once you automate everything, it takes the thought out of it and you start to be like, oh, you know what? Actually, I can save more than $200 a month. I can save $300, $400, $500. $400. And then before you know it, that starts to grow. And then your emergency fund starts to grow. And then once you get to where you want to be and you're working, 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 and you see like, let's say, overtime opportunities or you get a bonus from work or you get extra money, you're not thinking about it in a frivolous way like, oh, man, I'm about to spend this tax return. Oh, man, I got this bonus. I'm about to make it rain over here. I'm about to spend it on everything. It's not, it's not going to be like that. You're going to be thinking like, well, wait a minute. I already hit my goals in these areas. So what if I want to hit it a little harder? I already hit my three months worth of paycheck. So why not put this extra to go towards four? Oh, that business venture I've been talking about. Let me put this money over here. Because the thing is, anything can happen. And it's best to be in a place where you're ready. So if an emergency happens... Not only do you have $2,000, but you have three to six months worth of paychecks that can help protect you against those problems, financially, of course. And then you might have some business opportunities that come up. You want to be ready for those things where you have the money to, I don't know, shell out $10,000 on a business idea or $2,000 on a business idea or spend money on a class to further your education so you can be more valuable in whatever field you're in. If your car ever breaks down because your battery died, you don't want to be that person who's like, man, I don't, I don't got the money to replace my battery. You want to be like, yeah, I got it right here. Boom. I'll, I'll, I'll recover from that later. Think about it. You have thousands and thousands of dollars sitting in your emergency fund and in your savings account, and you run into an expense that costs you a few hundred dollars. Okay, whatever. No problem. Like, I'm not happy about it, but I'm, I'm not hurting either. It's time to replace all four tires. Okay, I got the money for it. It's all good. I don't, I don't got to worry about that. I can replenish that money later. You get sick, you get hurt, you break something. You can have this little money nest egg that you're kind of sitting on that can help you throughout these times. There's nothing worse than going through hard times and then also not having money to back you up because we all go through something. It doesn't have to be financial, but we all go through something emotionally, physically, spiritually, relationally. And when you go through these things, and you don't have money to kind of back you up, to kind of reassure you, to kind of help you get through that situation, it's very difficult. Imagine losing your job and you don't have any money to back you up. Imagine going through something extremely emotional for you and you also don't have money. Is that going to improve or worsen the situation? That's what I'm getting at. I'm not saying that money's going to solve everything, but having things happen to you and not having money is going to be a very, very bad combination for you. And to avoid that, I highly, highly suggest that you listen to what I'm saying in this video because if I could go back and do it all over again, this is exactly what I'd follow. In between all this stuff, I would be like a nerd about the stock market because now, what I know now about the stock market, I really, really, really wish I knew then. Because if I did, my net worth would probably be quadruple or quintuple what it is right now. I'm not lying. I'm not exaggerating. Like, And it might have been more than that because now I know quite a great deal about the stock market. And had I put my money in the stock market as opposed to other places, whew, things would be a lot different. But everything happens for a reason, and I fully accept that. So I would prioritize my financial well-being first. 
I would work on paying off debt next, little by little, of course. It's not going to be expected to happen overnight. And then once you feel like your money's right with your savings and stuff, go ahead, start investing. And then you'll probably still be paying off some debt still at that time. So you could probably do both. It just depends on what it looks like for you and how you want your finances to be set up. But this is a good starting point for anyone who is just starting to learn about personal finances. That is where you get started. And you start with peace of mind. You have a peace of mind. That means you have mental clarity. That means you make good decisions. And that means your future is going to look a lot brighter than it would if you didn't have that peace of mind. And you can pass that information on. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. That is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.